Hey guys, it's Bob Powers. Today I'm going to see what we can do with this pair of nice Johnston and Murphy uh, cap toe Oxfords. This model is called the Melton. Uh, I think this shoe re list retail price is about $175. And you can see these are not mine, but uh, this is the Midwest United States where we do have awful winters. And you can see terrible salt staining, salt and water staining there. Now I hope I'm going to try and catch them the light. It's actually happened, like even on the toe cap, I don't know if you can see it there a little bit in the video, uh, more on this toe, is the water and salt looks like they've penetrated the leather. Not only can you see the staining, okay, what you also see is it's actually created a bumpy texture. Looks like acne on the surface, okay? And I think what this person did was really tried to polish, um, you know, polish over or polish out the salt staining. And now, I think this is what happens. This white, I think, is actually just from too much polish. You know, now the, the, the you know, shoe polish itself is flaking off. So I think what I'm going to do first with these, um, I'm going to shampoo them with saddle soap. Um, and this stuff, um, Saphir Rental Mat. Um, I'm actually going to use this and try and strip what's on the surface off. Um, I'm not sure uh, what I'm going to be able to do to improve these things. Um, you can see the soles. These shoes actually do feature, if you see the stitching on top, okay, you can see the top layer of leather is the welt, the bottom layer of leather is the outsole. They do feature Goodyear uh, welted construction, so they are a high quality, good construction shoe. Um, heel taps need to be replaced too, you can definitely see there, they're obviously, you know, obviously worn through. So let's see what we can do to, you know, bring some life back to these shoes. I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do about the bumpiness in the leather though, so. Okay, um, I'll uh, break the video and I'm going to shampoo these shoes up first with saddle soap um, and I'll be right back. Um, I'm not going to show you that in this video, but I went over them with saddle soap. They're not even really dry yet and you can see it's taken some of the junk off of the surface um, and you can see the water actually has, it's interesting, the water from the saddle soap has soaked into um, this part of the shoe more than that part. So. Um, you know, the salt staining is, is, is it's pretty bad. It actually, I think, changes some of the chemical, chemical composition of the leather or adds chemicals to it. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but I know it's not good for it, okay? Um, so, anyway, um, I think next we're going to use the Renault mat. Okay, so now I've used the Saphir Renault mat. scrubbed pretty hard, and you can see actually from the cloth that I used, um, it took a lot of, taking a lot of the uh, extra polish and things off like that. Um, but you can clearly see that the salt staining is still very much there, okay? Um, you can see that some of the extra, extra wax and things like that have been taken off. But, you know, this is what we're going to try to do something about. And here, um, there, and I'll get in the light, and over here. So what I've got is, this is just, uh, it's not distilled water, but it's water filtered. We have a Brita water pitcher, so this is just, you know, water. Uh, room temperature water and some distilled vinegar okay and uh, I like to use a q-tip you can use a cotton swab whatever so we're just basically going to take equal parts water you don't have to be scientific about this but equal parts water and vinegar and vinegar is as you can see slightly acidic okay and what happens is if you don't do this you can actually just take a damp cloth and you can wipe the, the salt stains, like a lot of the times you'll see a white ridge there. You can wipe it off, polish the shoe when it's not this bad. You can wipe it off and polish it, and you'll think you've removed the salt stains. And then when you wear the shoe, it'll just kind of resurface again. And that's because there's salt staining, the, the salt is in the leather, and when your feet sweat, it will the moisture will bring it back out. So this actually, the uh, um, uh, salt in the leather will react with this mild acidic solution. Um, and we'll actually, I, I guess, combined with the salt, break it down, okay? So this is pretty simple. You just take it and rub it on there. And you can use a Q-tip to get down on the crack. You can be pretty liberal with it. You can see here, I'm going to go up past that salt stain, okay, in the leather. I'm going to go down here, all over the toe cap. And go, like I said, a little bit past where I see the staining, okay? And I'm just going to do this to both shoes. Okay, gonna let this sit on the shoe. Do not wipe it off. Just let it sit on the shoe. Okay. But what you actually see after this is dried is um, like a texture change. Okay. So I'm trying to not have the leather raised, if that makes sense. You know, 
and I'm just basically rubbing with pretty hard pressure. There is a shoe tree in here, so I'm pressing against the shoe tree. And you notice when I do that, I get some residue. I don't know if that's wax. Okay, I don't think, I do not think it's the surface of the leather, because the surface of the leather is still 100% intact. Okay, and I can uh, feel the stuff come off. But, what I, again, I've done this in one of their pairs, because I'm rubbing pretty hard, and what I'm trying to do is, while it's saturated, I almost am like massaging the leather to try to get that lumpiness out. Okay, and it's interesting. Well, I'm not sure if this is material coming out of the shoe or polish coming off of the surface. Uh, but it really does seem to help in reducing the, the surface texture, that raised surface texture. Okay, so I'm going to do it again here. A little bit of water and vinegar mix. Okay, and then while it's damp, just and I'm using, like I said, heavy pressure, okay? You can see, I'm not sure, again, if that is just the old polish coming off or if it's coming out of the material. But either way, it does seem to help. It does seem to get rid of most of that lumpiness. Okay, I'm still trying to get the lumpiness out of these shoes where they were salt stained. And what I've got here is Shoe MGK, so Shoe Magic Leather Cream. Um, I'm not necessarily going to tell you to use this as a leather conditioner versus other le leather conditioners. Um, I've been using this for a couple of years now, primarily number one, I've only been using it for a couple of years, so I can't really tell you what the effects of this on leather are for, you know, like five or ten years down the road. Number two, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't really know what's in it, so I'm not going to say that this is better or worse than any other the shoe leather conditioners, but um, anyway, just take, you know, it's very, very thick, you know, I just take a little bit of it, and I can't really, um, I'm going to have to put the camera down, but, you know, basically I'm going to do the same thing, just massage this into those areas, okay? Of the leather and you know keep massaging it and, and again I've done this in another pair of shoes we're gonna see if that helps to, to massage this uh, um, conditioning oil back into the leather to help reduce uh, get the lumpiness out so we'll see the result of this okay I'm done applying the shoe magic leather conditioner and my thumbs are really tired to be honest with you like on the toe cap area here especially um, you know I was pushing and rubbing the stuff in pretty much as hard as I could and at one point even putting my two thumbs on top of each other so what I want you to try and see I would say, if I can get it to focus on the toe cap, come on, that the um, the lumpiness, the bumpiness, I'm not sure what to call it, um, is, I would say, about 90% gone. I'm trying to get it in good light to so see you can see it here. Um, the camera seems to refuse to focus. So you can still kind of see it. Don't look at the color change. Okay, look at the surface texture, and I would say compared to before, I'd say it's about 90% gone. I'm pretty confident uh, when these dry, after I polish them up, that unless you knew that there was a problem, I don't think you're going to be able to tell that there's anything wrong with them. And if you can see here, um, it had, you know, these heel tacks on them, but this person is really hard on their shoes and actually walks like a duck if you can see on the outside edge it didn't really need to be replaced but i'm afraid that if i don't do it for this person it's going to wear into the heel base so just basically just this is just glued on so i've healed it off you can see this is a real uh stacked leather constructed heel which can be serviced so that's one of the good things about it so i'm going to take these up to the garage this makes this job a whole lot easier and i'm going to sand down the surface of these So you can see I have the new top lift put on and trimmed, and the key to trimming this, the key to trimming it is, is this blade here, you see, it's got a hook on it. So what that hook does is allow you to guide along the edge and follow the edge of the heel, and you get it nice and clean like that. Okay guys, I was not happy 
with the result from before. I just, it just kept eating at me, bothering me. Um, so what I've done here is I stripped back off everything that I put on, uh, the layers of wax, the, the, the neutral polish, I stripped off the, uh, the dark polish, the tan polish, and I only stripped it off from here forward. So I didn't touch the rest of the, the back of it. Okay. And I used a, and again, this is, I don't know if it's the right thing to do. I'm an amateur at this. I'm, this is not a living for me. This is for fun. Um, I used a combination of brake parts cleaner um, and alcohol reducer to try and get everything off of the finish. That is bad for leather, and I get that, but this is not a treatment. You know, this is getting the leather ready to re-dye, and then I will recondition it. I've already conditioned it once, okay, uh, with the shoe magic. And so you can see that really bad spot. It did lighten it because it was just dark, you know, and actually the bumpy part, I sanded it just ever so lightly. Uh, with uh, um, with like a 400 grit sandpaper, okay? Um, I sanded it just a little bit in that area there. And then on this, where it was real bumpy on the toe, a little bit in this area, I sanded it there, okay? So we're gonna try and uh, dye it. And what I'm gonna try to do is make it a little darker around the front and try and hide some of that, uh, you know, the staining there, the result from the staining, okay? So here we go. That's the trouble spot there. It's better. Still see it though. We're gonna see what happens. Let them dry for a few hours and then polish them up. Here's the finished result. And the only difference that you see here uh, from uh, when you saw them being airbrushed was I first put a couple coats of the Sapphire. Uh, this is a soft paste wax with a lot of pigment in it. And this is number three, light brown. Uh, put that on pretty heavy. Um, I'm pretty much, you know, I really only just polished from here forward because I didn't strip the wax off of the back. So mainly just in the front. Then I followed that up on the darker area on the toe. Again, this is sapphire and this is number one black. Um, and then I put a couple coats of the sapphire. This is a, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, this is more of the harder wax, uh, the traditional paste wax. Um, and this is the Pate Deluxe. This is a neutral, spit shined, didn't, you know, go crazy with it. Um, and, um, it's more of an art, I guess, than a, than a formula, but I am pretty pleased with the way these came out. Remember that awful way the side looked? Kind of was able to hide it with the, the darkening, the staining, okay. Looks pretty good, I think. Not bad, considering where we started from, you know. I think these shoes are definitely something that somebody could wear now. Um, you know, be proud of. So try and view from all angles. And I use this room here. Apologize, it's a little bit dirty. It's the laundry room, but I use it because it's got really good lighting. And it's away from the kids. So there you go. Hope, uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got something out of that. Take it easy.